Hello and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the third of six videos in a playlist on ANOVA and related concepts. There are four videos on various aspects of ANOVA only. Part 1, what ANOVA does. Part 2, how it does it. This Part 3 video is about one-way or single-factor ANOVA. Part 4 is about the two different types of two-way or two-factor ANOVA. Then there is a video which compares and contrasts ANOVA with regression hopefully giving you a better conceptual understanding of both of these concepts. And finally, there is a video on ANOM, ANOM, Analysis of Means. ANOVA can tell you whether there is a statistically significant difference among the, among the means of several groups, but it can't tell you which means are different. ANOM can do that. Now, depending on when you are viewing this, videos 4 through 6 may not be available yet. To get the latest status, see the videos page on the book's website. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, and then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. The first key to understanding is, in one way ANOVA, we study the effect of one nominal, or named, variable x on the dependent numerical variable y. The second KTU says that the objective of one-way ANOVA is to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference among the means of three or more groups. That is, do one or more group means stand out from the rest? Key to understanding number three says a seven-step method performs the analysis. Spreadsheets or software will do all this. You just provide the data. And the final KTU tells us that the output of an ANOVA single-factor analysis is a table which looks something like this. And here on one page, we summarize everything you need to know about one-way ANOVA. You may wish to pause the video and read all these keys together. Let's now begin our detailed explanation of each key to understanding. Number one, in one-way ANOVA, also known as single-factor ANOVA, we have a single factor. This is the x variable. A factor is also known as an independent variable. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. One might say that y is a function of x, but we cannot write a mathematical function for y equals f of x in this case. That is because x does not take on numerical values like 1, 2, 3, etc. x is a nominal, that is a named variable. So the values x takes on are names within a category. That is why this type of variable is also called a categorical variable. In the table at the bottom of the slide, we give three examples. In the first example, the scenario is a telemarketing call center. We are testing out three scripts for the callers to use. The category is scripts. These three scripts have the names A, B, and C. So these names are the values of the nominal variable X. In the second ex example, the X variable is the level of training. The possible values of X are the names beginner, intermediate, or advanced. In the third example, the x variable is school district, and the values of x are the six names of six school districts. KTU number two says that the objective of single factor ANOVA is to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference among the means of three or more groups. Do one or more of the group means stand out from the rest? <clears throat> Let's use the example of a telemarketing call center. This table shows the data we have collected. We have three groups corresponding to the three scripts A, B, and C. 
We had 10 people use each script, and the 10 columns of data show the dollar sales for each of the 10 people in the group. At the right is the mean of the dollar sales for each group. We see that scripts A, B, and C have means of 141.5, 132.5, and 126.5. Our immediate reaction might be to have everyone start using the highest scoring script, which is A. Or we might decide to stop using script C, the lowest scoring script. But is this difference among the means statistically significant? If we did the test again, would we be very likely to get the same ranking of the means? So one way ANOVA can tell us whether there is a statistically significant difference. KTU number three says that there is a seven-step method that the ANOVA analysis performs. This is usually done by spreadsheets or software, so all you have to do is supply the data. The method was described in detail in the ANOVA part two article and video using a concept flow diagram, which we'll show later in this video. But for now, let's just go through each of the seven steps briefly here. In step one, the sum of squares is calculated for each group. Then in step two, the sum of all these sum of squares, SSW, is the sum of squares within. In step three, the overall mean, X double bar, is calculated. This is the mean of all the data values in all the groups. Step four, sum up the differences between each group mean and the overall mean, multiply it by n. The number of values in that group to get the sum of squares between SSB. Step five, calculate the mean of all the sums of squares within to get MSW, the mean sum of squares within, and calculate MSB, the mean of the sum of squares between. K is the number of groups. In our example, K equals three. Capital N is the number of data values in all groups. Since we have three groups of 10, capital N equals 30 in our example. The formulas for MSW and MSB happened to be similar to the formula for the variance. So MSB and MSW can be treated like variances. Step six, if we divide two variances, we get the test statistic F. So F equals MSB divided by MSW. Now having a value for a test statistic, we can now perform a hypothesis test. The null hypothesis will state that there is no statistically significant difference among the means. We select a value for alpha, the level of significance, and most commonly alpha equals 5% is selected. This, together with the F probability distribution, gives a value for F critical, the critical value of F. And the seventh and final step gives us the conclusion from the hypothesis test. If F is greater than F critical, which is equivalent to P less than or equal to alpha, then there is a statistically significant difference among the means of the groups. So we reject the ANOVA null hypothesis. If F is less than F critical, which is, same, which is the same as P is greater than alpha, there is not a statistically significant difference between the means of the groups. So we accept or we fail to reject the ANOVA null hypothesis. Everything we just described is summarized in this one concept flow diagram. If the explanation in the preceding slides was not clear enough for you, you might try viewing the part two video. Now that video starts with this concept flow diagram and explains it piece by piece. ANOVA tables come in different forms, but they usually have the information shown here. An ANOVA table is produced in multiple regression analysis, as well as in screening experiments in design of experiments. You can see that the conclusion from the hypothesis is, hypothesis test is shown at the top. Cannot reject the null hypothesis because P is greater than 0 0.05. Means are the same. That is, there is not a statistically significant difference among the means. And we see in the p-value column that p equals 0 0.690, which is indeed substantially greater than 0 
0 0.05 had been selected by the tester as the value for alpha, the level of significance. The tester will tolerate no more than a 5% probability of an alpha error or false positive. Comparing P to alpha is statistically identical to comparing P, I mean comparing F to the critical value of F. F critical being less than F, as in this example, is statistically identical to P being, being greater than alpha. This is in, in the final in this in step in the method step 7. The rest of the table shows some underlying details. The SS column shows sum of squares. SS for between groups is the sum of all the SSBs of each group. This is calculated in step 4. In SS for within groups, is the sum of all the SSWs. This is calculated in step two. DF stands for degrees of freedom. For between groups, DF equals K minus one, where K is the number of groups. In our example, we have three groups, so K is three, and degrees of freedom equals three minus one, or two. For within groups, DF equals N, capital N minus K, where capital N is the total number 30 of y measurements. So df equals 30 minus 3 equals 27. ms is mean sum of squares, and values are given for msb and msw. You can see that their ratio gives us, gives us the value of the test statistic f. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week, as well as an occasional post showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.